let's get started. Um, welcome friends, I'm Sarita, part of the Bloom plant platform team, and I'll be your host for this session. Bloom has been a pioneer in adopting the platform strategy in India. It all started way back in 2013. So the idea behind this session is to decode and transparently share Bloom's own platform playbook. So we'll be covering a whole uh, gamut of things, starting from the vision behind it by Karthik Reddy. We'll also have uh, functions, the roles, people behind the scenes, our learnings through the journey. And we'll also rope in two of our founders, the reign of Turtlement and Gaurav of Procol. We'll eventually end with a Q&A. So we'll be happy to um, answer all your questions. Please feel free to post it on the chat and we'll be happy to pick it up at the end. For all those who are new to this industry, a quick snapshot on what is, what is platform, right? Platform is a wide range of services, pre and post support and support services for our platform, uh, for our portfolio companies. So pre-investment includes diligence, documentation, compliance, and post-investment includes a number of pillars starting from full stack advisory services, talent acquisition, business development, growth and exits community. We'll be deep diving into a lot of this in the later half of the session, but <clears throat> And platforms have moved from nice to have to from a nice to have to a need to have so um, it's almost become synonymous with the word with the term vc and as you can see these are the services that a number of uh, vc firms offer bloom has been a pioneer and we would love for karthik to share some, the vision behind it so in the early days it was ask which is ashish sanjay and karthik who pioneered and who wore multiple share uh, multiple hats and shared all of these services, who provided all of these services to the portfolio companies. So would love to um, request Karthik to share the vision behind the platform. Over to you, Karthik. Can you hear me? Yeah, all good. Super. Thanks a lot, Sarita, for being the host. Um, and uh, basically, if you if, uh, had to walk through the vision very quickly, I think philosophically, the founders of uh, Bloom always saw you know, platform as a, an extension of how we thought about what we can do for our portfolio companies, right? And so the idea that doing early stage investing, really seed stage investing, uh, we thought, we're not just enabling capital into the companies, but we can be a force multiplier. And I've always had this belief or this term that I use inside the firm that a job of a venture capitalist to sort of is to manufacture, manufacture serendipity, right? So what do we do? We basically make these connections, uh, not out of thin air, but like out of informed networks of uh, various people and, and, uh, and, and services that we can bring to the portfolio company. So platforms are, in our head, those enablers, if they've been thought through very comprehensively from the beginning and from the get-go. And we feel that once the capital is in the bank of the portfolio company, um, there's not much more that the capital can do. It's in the hands of the portfolio company and the CEO and the founders. And they have to figure out ways to force multiply that effect of that capital. And we think that force multiplication happens with people. And so a lot of those people obviously are the team and the employees that build up and, and sign up for the vision that the founder sells. But as investors, can we do something to augment that? And that was the origin of the thought. And the way we would move on this uh, after the first two years was basically how much of a time you gave as, a, uh, as an investor in the boardroom or sat in strategy and whiteboard sessions, it eventually boiled down to people who can action certain things. So if you come and ask me, what's, a, you know, what's the regulatory glitch in, a, in taking a foreign investor in at, at a seed round, I have finite knowledge on how I can help. And those thought processes triggered the beginnings of what became the Bloom platform. You're gonna hear a lot about all those functions that came together in the last, uh, in the last many years. So we started organizing those, uh, the team members along these functional assistants for the startups. And that became what we call platform. And interestingly, the first two massive experiments in this were Constellation and Passion Connect which were both actually spun out of, the, of Bloom. They never stayed inside Bloom as a, as a uh, function, but actually was spun out to create a more entrepreneurial ecosystem 
where they actually help uh, our, our portfolio companies. And you'll hear a lot about that uh, when you meet those teams today. So I've, I've uh, in, in a nutshell, uh, all I wanted to add was the other punchline that I use a lot in uh, as a guiding stick for anybody who joins Bloom. And when we talk about adding so-called value to founders, we think of whatever action that you take as a VC, are you doing one of these two things? Are you increasing probability of success or are you decreasing probability of failure for the startup, for the founder, for the team? And those goals, therefore, as long as they're being met, then you're doing some incredible work as a platform. On the positive side, on increasing probability of success, that's either improving revenue prospects, capital access, quality of talent, and the quality of learnings that we bring from all our portfolio companies to bear uh, at a particular portfolio company. And the, the idea of decreasing the probability of failure should be to address organizational conflicts, whether it's at the board level, founder level, exits, how do you guide founders into thinking about exits and minimizing friction, maximizing the opportunity, and they use those financial and administrative frictions. So this was the vision. It's been consistent, eight, 10 years. That's what allowed us to build a 30 plus person team at Constellation, 20 plus 20 person team at Passion Connect, and now the Bloom internal team has also grown uh, to almost 10 people. So thanks, Sarita. I'll leave it at that. I'm available for Q&A later. Thanks. Thanks, Karthik. Um, over to the man behind the scenes, Ashish. He's often referred to as the backbone of Bloom. So Ashish will share with us the journey when each function was introduced, what was the idea behind each of these functions, and much more. Uh, Ashish, over to you. Thanks, Arita. Uh, that was a very generous one. Uh, it's been teamwork. So, uh, broadly, uh, I will uh, definitely like to share a few pointers through the journey and a uh, bit of a context. When you talk about the early stage check writer, uh, we come in all uh, shapes, size, and forms. Investors are largely check writers. And uh, Globally, when it comes to platform during 2011, 12, uh, there were only a couple of uh, playbooks and organizations that had done successful in the US and something more closer to home in China, where uh, there was a, there is a firm called uh, Innovation Works and in US it is A16Z and first round capital. And when we were looking at how we were shaping out in terms of our intent, trying to support founder, and look at founder as a center of our universe. Keep them as a customer who needs all the help and support to minimize the probabilities of failure, like Karthik said, or maximize the probabilities of success. And when we looked around for some more inspiration as we were doing some of those things ourselves, uh, there was also a uh, bottoms up, uh, grounds up approach on first principles, like Karthik keeps using the word that yeah, we, the endeavor is to humbly copy all best practices and create something of our own. And broadly, the realization was that a lot of other firms, if you, whatever few firms are doing it, they're doing with much larger AUMs. And we are going to be probably doing it with uh, a small sum of a uh, couple of crores, which was the fee base during the initial uh, quantum of our fees in the first five years of our journey. So that with that challenge, there was a, a fair bit of effort started off internally, and then we added uh, Varun uh, to help us with our internal work at Bloom. And once in a while, we would offer help and support to the portfolio. There was good feedback. We started saying that, okay, how to scale this further? And we were also, while all of this was happening, this was 2013, and we were a little surprised at the way how initial uh, seed rounds were being managed by lawyers, advisors on diligence. You were going to see first time founders coming up and setting up their companies and there were always going to be glitches. The question was never about uh, whether you want to invest. The question was, how are you going to make the life of the founder easy? And with that view, we said, let us take over that role as well and start supporting our founders with solutions to their challenges. And when we started doing that, it was, used uh, we used a shared cost model so the first set of services that were offered was diligence and legal services and all of this started off in a separate spv and the intent was very simple whatever proceeds come let's please start expanding those operations hire more people 
have more people on board and add more services. And that's virtuous cycle kicked in on the external side of the platform. Well, the reason I'm using external side of the platform is both Constellation and eventually Passion Connect, uh, both of them will talk to all of you. They are both outside of the fund and the leadership is motivated entrepreneurially to run the platform. People who joined us there since the initial days continue to be leading and driving the team. And the idea was to make sure that the fees raised there from the founders by way of the shared cost continues to be available to expand the team. That is how a three-member team in Constellation grew to be a 35-member team. And that's how a two-member team in Passion Connect went up to 15, 20 members that we all see today. And while all of this was happening, as the AUM for Bloom grew, we started adding our own team within the firm as well. So the, even there, the goal was, okay, if there, were, if there was capital available, if there were fee revenues available, let us augment the team and see how we can add founders with uh, their sales effort, how we can add founders uh, to their fundraising efforts. And eventually, uh, 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 what today you see as a 20 odd member team were nothing but functions that were divided up. And what was something where we were not fully doing justice is now being fully done by a much larger number of teams to a much wider portfolio. Initially, questions would be asked as to how do we manage a portfolio as large as we do? And the answer is simple. While we are a 20 odd members team in the core team divided between an investment team and a platform team, we have more than 50 people on the platform side in Constellation, in Passion Connect, and the whole function is discharged to a larger, larger base organization that we have in what we call this platform bloom. So the whole approach is to be a full stack VC. Capital is one of the many things that we call as support. And then there are many more things that we augment to see the capital at play and build win-win situations for all. So that's how the platform journey has panned out. I will uh, let uh, the other colleagues share the actual journeys that they work with founders on the ground. Thank you, Sarka. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, thanks, Ashish, for taking us through. That gives us a lot of context. For all of you who want to just look at the Bloom platform team in one snapshot, right? This slide pretty much captures it. On top, we have the leadership team. On the left, like Ashish mentioned, we have the firms which were incubated at Bloom are now partner firms. So you have Constellation Blue, which is our full stack advisory. We have the Passion Connect, which is our hiring arm. And we have Arca, which is our B2B platform. On the right side, you can see the in-house platform team and we will you will meet meet most of the people behind the scenes here and you'll have uh, open to questions when they're uh, to chat with them right um moving here we thought it'll be good to look at it from a founder perspective if you're a founder how do these different members of the platform how do these roles play right um a platform can be incredibly helpful in the early part of a founder's journey when they don't have in-house resources and platform continues to play a role even as the venture scales. So in some sense, it's like a flywheel. Uh, the first touch point from a founder's perspective and a founder is first onboarded, the first touch point is Constellation Blue, which helps with diligence, compliance, term sheets. Would love to invite my colleague Mithul to tell you a little more about Constellation Blue. Mithul, over to you. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Sarita. And uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I am Mithul Mehta, partner at Constellation Blue, and it's a pleasure to be talking to all of you and introducing a little about Constellation. So Constellation is a, a full stack advisory firm focused on the tech and venture ecosystem and covering all things finance, legal and compliance. Uh, as an extension to the Bloom thought process, we have culturally built ourselves to have a strong ownership driven and hand holding approach with all our clients. Uh, we are a one of a kind from an ecosystem perspective started shop uh, you know within the bloom fund one office as a three member team and have a usp of having all under one roof we have chartered accountants company secretaries lawyers uh, the spirit of entrepreneurship you know was embedded by ashish sanjay karthik in our early days and that led to us branching out into a separate unit uh, today we have a dedicated team that serves the bloom portfolio and lps and a separate structure to cater to other clients uh, we have bootstrapped our way to a 40-member team today over the last eight years and have had the privilege of a steep and phenomenal learning curve while working with the ecosystem. Uh, these learnings enabled us to take the un unconventional path in various areas of our services. For example, you know, we realized that there is a, a big barrier between parties even at seed round transactions and they take inordinate amount of time and negotiations. 
uh, DD processes were full of friction. And and like Ashish mentioned, right, we started doing things, basis, first principles, the way Karthik put it, or, uh, you know, execution dictated by hardcore ground realities, uh, the way Ashish puts it. And on all Bloom investment transactions, we started sharing our financial and legal DD reports with founders and lawyers up front. All issues were disclosed. And in fact, we even give them solutions while disclosing these so that we can get to a perfect structure for an investment to happen. Uh, we realized that at an early stage, solutions is what matters and uh, alongside uh, alongside identification of the problems. And even though this has been an unconventional uh, practice, uh, it has been extremely fruitful from a founder perspective. Uh, it has taken time for us to scale and implement and very honestly, it's still work in progress. Uh, but one thing we are obsessed about is, you know, removing deal fatigue through the deal process. Uh, in fact, various other funds that we work with have also adopted this practice now after hearing about it. Uh, you know, similarly, along like 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 diligence, uh, when it comes to shareholder contracts, we realized that you know there was no point painting documents red, marking them with comments and changes. Instead, what we did is focused on the clauses that mattered and ensured that you know time is saved from all perspectives and yet. Uh, you know, keeping in mind all the important aspects of a transaction. Uh, think of it, right? If, if a founder raises five or six rounds from seed to unicorn stage, and each time they're spending nine to 12 months on a fundraise, and if we can bring this down to three to six months, uh, it, it's an overall one year plus of saving for a founder. And that is extremely valuable time going into business building. Uh, every year we do this internal benchmarking exercise that, you know, uh, time taken for negotiations, pattern of issues that we've really, you know, seen in, in the deal making process, how startups are setting up their teams and realize that there is a pattern in certain common traits uh, in all successful teams and founders. Uh, and this has reflected in the way we have added more services for the founder community. We, we added retainer services so that we could correct a few things upfront rather than wait for, you know, later stages that follow on and exits and drain out a lot of time. Uh, we have managed to create an impact with trust and quality level of services. Uh, we we started working with co-investors of Bloom, uh, LPs of Bloom throughout their investments and exits as well. With this whole ownership-driven approach that we have, what we've tried to do is ensure that we are relevant throughout the life cycle of a, of a company, uh, you know, starting at incorporation to their first fundraise, to their growth fundraises, or be it you know, setting up a finance team from scratch, building it, operating it, uh, helping the founders recruit members who can then, you know, be trained and take over the finance function as they go. Uh, you know, various kind of services uh, to be relevant at each stage for a company. Uh, like, you know, some of the companies that we would have worked with include Turtleman, Dunzo, Purple, Now Floats, Slice, across all the various funds uh, that Bloom has. Fun fact, uh, you know, don't be surprised if you see two different partners of Constellation Blue represent two different parties on the same transaction. Uh, yes, we've managed to do that as well, not only for follow on growth fundraisers, but even exits. Uh, again, this is, you know, a first of its kind and, and largely because of the Bloom ethos, which is to break barriers, create trust and build organizations to scale. Uh, the advantages of being on the platform and seeing companies from scratch to exit has, has enabled us with a lot of learnings and we have embedded them within our services when working with these startups. So uh, all that experience then helps in ensuring that there are no repeat errors throughout the process. I think with this brief, uh, I'd probably like to conclude and, and as was mentioned in the presentation earlier, we'll continue to uh, you know, shoot to be one of the various force multipliers for the ecosystem at large. Thank you. Hey, thanks. Thanks, Mithul. So if any of you have any questions for Mithul or for the CB team, you can feel free to type it on the Q&A and we'll take it up at the end of the session. So as you all know, we solve for founders, right? And we ask them, what are your other challenges? What can we help you with? And on top of that list was hiring, right? All of them needed help with hiring. And that led to the birth of Passion Connect, led by our vivacious Sanam. So let's take a sneak peek into what Passion Connect has to offer. And over to you, Sanam. Thank you, Sarita. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. Um, I am Sanam Rawal and the Lead Talent Advisor at Passion Connect. Uh, I finished six years at this job today that today has become much more than a job. And let me take you through how we solve uh, very critical hiring problems for the 110 plus portfolio companies that Bloom has invested in. 
when I go back to my time, I was a naive young girl with four years of experience when I realized that I wanted to build the next generation startups of India. Um, that's when I got introduced to the Bloom Ventures team. With just one meeting, I realized that we are on to becoming the largest um, platform for uh, the largest uh, VC uh, with a very, very extensive um, community of founders and an ecosystem that India will ever have. From that day, it's been a drive. A drive to help our founders hire the best professionals in the uh, ecosystem who believe in what they are solving, who believe in what Bloom is solving with them. I remember once a founder came and told me that hiring is uh, harder than um, even starting a startup. Um, you know, he mentioned uh, to me that uh, he was, you know, it was so hard for him to find uh, and accept the fact that uh, startups today uh, have uh, VCs who are ready to invest in them, but people who are not ready to believe in them. I think that was the time when I realized that if I'm able to make a founder journey much more smoother by cracking the early stage uh, startup hiring, it would be worthy of a career. And that's how Passion Connect grew to become India's uh, largest talent unit that no VC in India has till now. I remember it was a critical aspect to solve, right? I mean, how do you convince people today with having such large companies like the Flipkarts and the Swiggies, who anybody wants to join? How do you convince people in the industry today to, um, you know, uh, to join an app uh, called Dunzo, which was started off in a garage by, uh, you know, 10 people in 2016? Or how do you convince people to uh, join an, an academy with, uh, which was solving test preps, which was just a 30 member team? Um, I think that is what Passion Connect is that solving. We were eventually able to convince 600 and plus people to join the Bloom Ventures ecosystem from a salary of 10 lakhs per annum to 2.4 crores per annum. I think eventually Passion Connect didn't sell jobs. I think we sold dreams and the dreams of many that have had uh, the best job experiences across their entire career. I think it was at the second year of Passion Connect, we ended up helping professionals stay in the Bloom Ventures ecosystem for four or five jobs in a row. And we started creating this entire enthusiasm of people not wanting to be with any other company, but only companies that Bloom has backed. Um, how do we do this, right? I think the idea and the entire analogy stays in the name of what Passion Connect is doing. We made people believe in their passion. Health tech, logistics, space tech, robotics, ed tech. Bloom had invested in unicorns that were still under the making. But the Indian mindset uh, today, uh, which uh, is over the way people look at jobs, um, is pretty much about the kind of CTCs they're involved in, or kind of kind of designations they get, or the benefits that the startup is giving. I think we changed that. We changed it to making people believe about the autonomy, uh, you know, of the roles that are given to them with upcoming startups. Being a big fish in a small sea, learning or learning on the job, and being responsible to create direct impact into the company. Trust me, if you would ever end up talking to any one of the 600, you will realize of the different perspective of job seeking that we were able to inculcate on them. I think that's the journey of Passion Connect. We now have become a one-stop shop to solve anything uh, HR, from a Series A company to uh, building the entire core team of a Series F startup, a 19-member team, and a promise to be, bring to your table a never-ending support system. I'm proud to call Passion Connect a setup that makes the Bloom Ventures platform a re remarkable one. Um, I hope you or anybody for that matter end up being uh, and getting a chance to talk to anyone in Passion Connect and you'll know what we, uh, you know, what we sell and how we do it because at the end of the day, it is about creating the largest ecosystem of founders and I very truly believe that Bloom is on to be becoming the unicorn in being able to create a platform like this. Thank you so much. Uh, appreciate it. Thank you, Sarita. Hey, thanks. Thanks so much, Sanam. So Sanam doesn't have any diversity issues to worry about. There's a huge all women with just three men uh, team. So often, awesome, Sanam. Uh, going back to the founder journey, right? Uh, we solve for we solve for diligence, compliance, term sheets. We solve for hiring. And we said, what next, right? What is it that founders want from us? And the answer was loud and clear. They wanted help with Connects, right? And that's where... We have a very passionate Jitesh. Uh, he stepped in with business development. So over to you, Jitesh, to tell them a little about your role and how you help founders through this journey. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Sarita. Thanks, everyone, for uh, listening to us. Uh, my name is Jitesh, and I lead market development at Bloom. My main role, as Sarita mentioned, is to manage our ecosystem and corporate partnerships, uh, essentially to help cost saving and, and revenue growth. Uh, to put it differently, I'm, I'm as direct as show me the money as they come. 
um as you all know opening doors at the right time can really be a game changer and and i faced this myself when i was a founder a few years ago uh, my simple goal with this role is to be someone who was not there for me when i was a founder and and that kind of personal mission really you know kind of makes work and play blend together very well uh, how to do this uh, i work very closely with the founders in the early stages and and then as they hire their sales teams moving forward to help understand their sales pipelines who they need to connect with and more importantly map that back to the large bloom global network that we have this works for multiple reasons uh, if you ask me one because it allows us to practically become an extended sales arm of the portfolio companies uh, you should hear this from uh, gaurav who's who's on later today uh, we work very closely together uh, also this comes at no cost to the founders uh, because this is an in-house uh, thing that we do uh as as someone who's on this journey i think some of the best compliment that you can get is when founders actually tell kartik and i know this has happened a few times when they actually tell them that jitesh is part of an part of their team and works more with them than i work uh, at bloom um and often uh, you know mentions around board chats and board conversations really go a long way in in getting these validations that you're doing something right uh also i think not just for the founders but at the same time for the ecosystem at large and i and i see a lot of uh, a lot of you who i who i work with uh, in the audience i think it helps have one person as a point of contact which sort of lets you double down and and work more closely uh to help navigate and to help solve your problems i think it it works both ways we call ourselves a two sided marketplace in that sense um and and to that effect we work very closely with all the large tech companies large consulting firms large corporates and even other uh, actors in the ecosystem to help drive this i think to top this all i think this only works if you're truly passionate about what you do and and you know you wake up worrying about the problems the founders have because i think as investors we are at best supporting actors we we really can't do much more but i think it's it's the way we go about it and remember things and and be able to actually execute is where it comes down um, and and i think that 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 should that should uh, your work should speak for yourself uh, on that front i think lastly uh, one day i think why bloom has done this well is is i i feel personally vcs are often structured vertically right you have the investment teams where there are people managing various sectors uh, functions like bizdev sit horizontal which allows us to leverage not just uh you know lev networks across the board but also a lot of learnings uh which which only someone like me will have and then be able to connect that with various various stakeholders internally and and, and uh, at the end of the day as is again kartik had mentioned and i was hoping to use this now but now it's overused uh, here we are here to increase the probability of success and reduce the probability of failure uh i think one last thing uh and i've been doing this now for all more than 2 years um one vision of this role uh, is just like all the vcs uh, mentioned this slide about valuation increases to their lps i think uh, a great metric which we hope to achieve is to actually have an aggregate arr increase slide next to that to really uh, go a long way and show what we have done uh, and i hope we get there uh, we get there very soon so um, yeah that's that's about that uh, happy to take up questions uh, as it comes along on the chats and thanks again for the opportunity to speak Hey, thanks, Jitesh. Uh, so, Jitesh, uh, from a founder perspective, helps with BD. And as founders who are on the call, you know whom to connect to if you need any connect, whether it's in India, in US, or in Uzbekistan. Um, moving on from business development, we said what next, right? Um, one issue we saw that a uh, lot of early stage founders. uh seldom have marketing budgets and uh, most of them are minimum or zero budget so we have uh, vinay on board who helps them uh, with marketing strategies he also helps founders at scale with connecting them to the right experts so he's our one stop shop for all things marketing so these are all in house roles and then we said okay as a venture scales the founder wants to learn and grow too so how better than to connect them to their very own peers so we have the community lnd and founder advisor team so dipika mesha and i sarita we manage this huge community at bloom which is a very thriving community um i manage the founder advisor network at bloom what is the founder advisor network it's a network of all of our alums it's a network of super 30 which we call which is a a group of uh, top 30 angels of india whom we regularly interact with 
we also have a list of in industry experts mentors who are very happy to engage with us the goal here is to leverage all of these relationships the extended bloom network and to benefit our portfolio so this was one of the problem statements when i first joined bloom that how we have this huge network of we built over the last 10 years and there's just that much time that ashish sanjay and kartik have so how we as a platform team can leverage all of these relationships for the benefit of our portfolio and it should be a win win it should be a win for the um, for the angels for the investors who can get opportunities to invest with bloom as well so i'll give you an example to give you some context we had a recent investment in an autonomous robotic startup and we roped in one of our very prominent angels from this very very network to write a small check into this company because we believed he added a lot of strategic value so in this case it was a win win i also ran a uh, the bloom founders fund which is a recent initiative which helps us write very small relationship checks again for our alums people in our own network uh, men, founders who are mentoring new founders and all of that so it's like increasing the surface edges so in this case an example is praveen jadav who's uh, ex paytm money he's back through this uh, bloom founders fund initiative and praveen by himself can be a great mentor to a lot of our early stage fintech startups right so from a founders journey any time anyone needs a connect it just takes a moment for us to reach out to our network on this um, chart let's go back to the chart um, you can see there something called pod portfolio onboarding day so mesha from our team she just initiated this and what uh, what portfolio onboarding day is the last pre, uh, it, it's hosted every quarter and every quarter the founders who are onboarded they're brought in they're introduced to the platform team they're introduced to some of our season founders uh, just last month we hosted a pod in bangalore and a lot of our founders came in some joined us virtually some joined us in per person uh, in an outdoor environment and we had the most amazing moment a miraculous moment because we had ragu who's one of our ex founders uh, fund one founder taxi for sure he spent almost two and a half hours having an off the record conversation with these new founders so these this is what we mean by bloom's thriving community uh, dipika on our team leads community and her her role is basically to create serendipity like kartik said create opportunities for all of our founders to connect and learn from each other and all grow with each other of course we also bring in the industry experts whenever required so let me share a story uh, that will highlight the power of community at bloom so it was way back in march uh, 17 2020 covid had just hit us um, although the numbers were run rising city by city people were casual the general consensus consensus was that this too shall pass but we brought in one of our veteran founders manish sharma who runs a chain of retail stores and he he was on the front lines he could see the impact and the session was a night session it was called code red when manish shared he shared so openly he said i'm sharing with my family bloom is my extended family and he shared his cash flows he shared what he saw as impact when they went from code orange to code red what code red meant and that was like a wake up call it was like this is the word was strong and clear pause cut costs renegotiate your rent increase runway i think that night the kartik and sanjay got number of calls from founders because that kind of really hit them hard so this this shows the camaraderie that uh, our founders enjoy being part of the bloom community last year we hosted more than 100 sessions as part of the bloom lnd and community sessions over to finance that was community uh, from bloom over to finance we have gayatri and alok who manage finance at bloom and finance too here is not vanilla finance right they managed to touch founders and alok will share more with you alok over to you thanks a lot sir it's a pleasure to be a part of this session as that form is the embodiment of key values that bloom holds and that is how it has been created i'm alok i work on finance and investor relations While typically finance functions, as Sarita mentioned, are inward-looking, a key focus area at Bloom Finance and IR has been to be able to tap the Bloom LP pool and enable connections with founders, whether for fundraise, market development, or other objectives. In that sense, we operate with a very different approach, which is aligned to the ethos of Bloom. The macro value add that finance has been creating has been assisting Ashish, Sanjay, Karthik 
in creating pools for growth capital such as fund 2a and the new fund 1x that we did also we have institutionalized our process of syndicating follow on capital wherever relevant from the bloom lp pool and working closely with the capital markets team you hear about them i mean uh, immediately after me. we would showcase opportunities to the bloom investor base basis their investment focus and appetite so there is a good match and we are able to leverage whatever we have in terms of our investor base and bring to the portfolio thanks for everyone's time and over to you sir sorry um thanks thanks alok and now moving to the capital markets team right we often say that founders never stop fundraising they're always in fundraising mode we have a very strong in house capital markets team led by two rock stars kunal bajaj and kartik vasudevan over to kartik to share more with you hi everyone my name is kartik vasudevan and uh, together with my colleague kunal bajaj and i um, we formed the two per two person capital markets team here at bloom ventures so in order to give you all a quick 20 seconds on us by way of introduction we both joined the team back in uh, january and we bring 30 plus years of across the spectrum corporate finance experience to the team uh, kunal formerly um, occupied senior leadership positions in institutional equities across firms like goldman sachs CLSA and Jeffries. Uh, further, he's someone who's actually walked the talk, entrepreneurially speaking. Um, he actually has founded and successfully exited his own fintech startup. As for myself, I spent a little over nine years in corporate finance, two thirds of it in technology investment banking, primarily focused on semiconductors, software, and in-depth digital media. Um, I've helped raise a little over seven billion in equity and debt capital, and uh, advised on a little bit, a uh, little over two billion dollars worth of M&A transactions and big credits. at funds like Rothschild, HDFC and JP Morgan both here and in the Bay Area. So our role here is to advise Bloom's portfolio companies and our investment leads on basically capital M&A and capital markets considerations. Um so what exactly does this entail? So we counsel portfolio companies on all aspects of capital raising. Now this ranges from proactive fundraise planning and prep, identifying and curating connections with potentially impactful follow-on investors, and and the end transaction execution support now i think the one thing that i i, I don't um wish to speak for kanal but he has mentioned this a few times one thing that draws both to the role is the depth and variety of bloom's portfolio the diversity of sectors the scale and value propositions that we work with means that we get to roll up our sleeves on a day to day basis and dig deep into the bones of business models whether enterprise or customer saas bharat saas and across sectors as diverse as healthcare um development tools marketplaces and space tech regardless the output that we provide comes with the same set of primary deliverables efficient and effective storyboarding of pitches uh information memorandum presentations um investor introductions and lastly advisory on tactical fundraising strategies across the investment cycle from seed stage to exit now as you can see this is clearly a complex iterative drawn out kind of process and you know that's something that's going to draw drown out uh, founders attention and kind of put away from incubating growth uh, for the next stage so to harken back to what karthik mentioned earlier you know um the way we try to sort of minimize the probability of failure is by ensuring that bloom's portfolio companies are never capital dry so the way we do this really is by building and maintaining long term relationships with a network of um, global growth and late stage investors uh corporate venture capital arms and investment bank partners and and advisors and spearheading all these relationships is essentially our job and then we relay that to or we output the proofs from that to our investing companies and so far all our activities have largely been on the private side and we anticipate a flurry of exit opportunities across our portfolio over the next 5 years um as you may or may not know 12 of our companies are currently valued at 100 million plus So this is going to entail, you know, our expertise on all aspects of capital markets including IPO preparedness, timing and positioning and underwriting, you know, tie ups and so on. And uh, that's basically it and thank you very much for your time. Thank you Sarita. Thanks thanks KB. So before we move on and change gears, I'd like to share a little glimpse into the Bloom's thriving community. These are a few of our sessions uh, the 100 last year were mostly virtual but we hope to get back to live sessions soon. uh switching gears moving to uh, would love to introduce you to arka it's um they're addressing it's a 
uh, incubated at Bloom. And it's a one of a kind fund for Indian startups to establish and scale in US. They're addressing a vacant space in the Indian US corridor and Radesh will talk more about it. Over to you, Radesh. Uh, thank you, Sarita, for having me and uh, good, morning, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everybody there, depending upon which time zone you are from. Uh, before starting, I would like to also give a uh, context around why our commercial labs was formed. As you all know that India has a great source of talent in developing products, world-class products, and also great talent around inbound marketing and servicing clients. But the real market is in uh, the developed nations around uh, Europe and US. And uh, there is a strong arbitrage for companies to develop, uh, especially B2B SaaS companies to develop products here in India and sell into the US and European markets. And we have seen multiple success stories around uh, uh, companies, B2B enterprises who have followed this particular model and scaled uh, very well. Uh, classic examples are Freshwork, Icerties, uh, ZenoD, uh, po Postman, and uh, uh, and then there's strong opportunity for uh, Indian enterprises to go global, but what they lack is the guidance and the capital to go and attack the market in the US and Europe. And uh, Karthik, Ashish and Sanjay saw this particular opportunity and that's how Arca Venture Labs was born in uh, August 2018. Uh, since inception, uh, we have made uh, 18 investments and uh, we'll be likely to make another four more in the next one month. Uh, and we have had so far two exits and uh, three up round, three of our portfolio companies are uh, having had up, up rounds. Uh, what we provide is we provide uh, 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 funding. Uh, we provide funding between 100K to 200K. We also provide mentoring and uh, this mentoring is uh, very uh, hands-on mentoring around different aspects around uh, B2B enterprises starts from product to product market fit to go to market inbound marketing channel strategy uh, we all come from a very solid background around uh, enterprise technologies business development and uh, uh, product management uh, and that's what we uh, transfer that uh, uh, our knowledge to the portfolio companies uh, we also help them to connect to enterprises uh, and in our network as well as to system integrators in our network uh, and uh, uh, also to uh, network of uh, investors for their uh, current round as well as for their fall-on round. I'll give you two examples in terms of how we have helped uh, two of our portfolio companies. The first example I'd like to give is around uh, a company called Obviously.ai. Now, these two founders are from Berkeley and uh, they had their first round of investments coming from Sequoia Scout and uh, Berkeley Skydeck program. And when they approached, they were still uh, in their MVP stage and uh, we guided them very closely around how they should go about developing the product and ensuring that uh, they uh, approach the right uh, ideal customer profile. And we also helped them in defining the ideal customer profile. And, uh, uh, and, and currently uh, we made that investment in around late August 19 and they are now uh, more than 200K ARR company and they got their recently their up round from the uh, likes of B Capital. Uh, the other company that uh, we have worked closely is uh, Nirmata that I would like to uh, give an ex as an example. Uh, Nirmata was uh, having a revenue of 1 million plus ARR. They are in the space of Kubernetes management and governance. Uh, and when, when we invested and we started working with them, we helped them to uh, form a new line of product called Kiverno which is an open source uh, uh, product for uh, policy governance around uh, Kubernetes. And they launched it in August, in October last year. And so far they have got 1 million downloads and now they are, we are helping them to strategize new product lines around Kiverno. So these are, there are multi, many more examples uh, around how we have worked with the portfolio companies. Uh, uh, um, but at a later point, anybody who's willing to want to learn, happy to connect with them. Uh, so over to you, Sarita. Thank you for having me again. Thanks, thanks Radesh. So as is evident, we have come a long way and learned a lot along this journey. So we would love for Sanjay to come in and share some of our learnings through this journey. Sanjay, over to you. Thank you, Sarita. Can you hear me fine? Sure. Yeah. Uh, welcome all. Uh, you know, uh, a couple of slides ago, Sarita had some pictures of our beloved Bloom Villa. And this year has been interesting to say the least where, you know, we're all doing this virtually. Uh, but you see some pictures, so hopefully uh, next year, if not earlier, we'll definitely do a community event there. That's uh, where we. That's really the 
home of the Bloom platform in one sense. Um, so, um, you know, you've seen, uh, you heard Karthik talk about the vision and Ashish talked about the sort of execution roadmap. Uh, I didn't want to read uh, from the slides per se, but I thought I'd just share some thoughts here. Um, one of the, uh, you know, the, the first principles that we like to believe in and uh, usually quote is that we are in a people flow business, not a deal flow business. And in one sense, as you've seen Sarita outline and introduce, uh, you know, the whole cast of characters uh, in the platform, basically it's a series of initiatives and experiments to help our founders, right? They're all designed around our founders. Um, you know, the first, uh, first principle is focus on execution. At the end of the day, uh, you could talk about strategy and everything, but founders need things done and they need it done yesterday. Uh, and we're really, the whole platform team are really the eyes and ears uh, offering full stack help. You, you heard a lot of VCs talking about it, but uh, as you see, you know, we are a full stack platform. Um, the second point is, uh, you know, early in our journey, uh, you know, uh, uh, before we started Bloom, Karthik and I made a couple of trips to the US and we, uh, uh, you know, met, uh, uh, you know, platform pioneers like First Round Capital, Innovation Works, Andreas Horowitz. And the whole idea very much from the core was, uh, you know, from the get go was to design this platform around the founder's needs. So it is not an afterthought. It was not something that we added on earlier. The investment team and platform were literally set up side by side from day one. And essentially, if you think about it, you want your founders focused on really three things, right? Uh, Sanam talked about very passionately about hiring. Uh, you know, you obviously have to build the product and then you need to sell it and fundraising. But everything else, uh, you know, we are really that full stack platform. So it works only when you start with that vision from, uh, you know, from the top down. Uh, the third point, uh, you know, this slide was really about sharing our learnings and Sarita, what a, you know, I was just thinking about it. I think the biggest learning is the sharing of learnings that the last year has given us right from our advisors and mentors uh, to our founders, within our founders, we set up uh, cohorts and very interestingly, uh, we came up, uh, you know, with, uh, we called it vitamins. Uh, we had different vitamins. Now it seems so long back, but we had, uh, we had them around different uh, kinds of cohorts and we all had vitamin cohorts. And the whole idea here is that, you know, it's transparency at its, at its core. Uh, many VCs sometimes, you know, help their, uh, you know, the investment team helps their portfolio companies, you know, the ones, the, the ones that you've led the investment in. But we basically extend this right across. Jitesh was talking about it. KV, uh, Karthik Vasudevan talked about it. That's where scale and network effects really kick in. Uh, you know, we, we often have uh, Google Sheets that we prepare and that we share with our, uh, with our founders. Uh, like Jitesh was saying, uh, you're really becoming an extended member of the team. You know, you're not on the other side. You're really part of the team. We joke, I mean, nobody uses business cards anymore, but if we had business cards, you know, we would, we would also have them. The, the fourth point is really about measurement, right? Uh, and, you know, our LPs and others ecosystem also often uh, ask this, that uh, it's great, you know, it's great bells and whistles, but unless you measure it, it's not really successful. And, uh, you know, we talked earlier about measuring aggregate uh, ARR uh, that we can help with the companies, you know, in Hindi, we call it generating dhanda, uh, a founder NPS code, which is really, you know, all this is great, but can you really tie it to outcomes and results? And that's what we are you know, constantly looking to push the envelope and uh, innovate uh, to see if we can come with the equality of a balanced scorecard, not just for the entire platform, but also for the sub elements of the platform. So, you know, without, uh, uh, without further ado, uh, I just wanted to, before we wrap up, uh, one interesting line that we think about with really differentiates Bloom is the best founders are coming for the capital and staying for the platform. And uh, in a very interesting way, 2020 really showed the power of the platform because with the world working remotely, um, you need more help than ever. And that's really where, you know, the entire platform got together, the community got together, right from helping founders with, you know, their mental stress, uh, you know, to, uh, uh, to learning uh, is, uh, you know, really brought the platform to the floor. Uh, and, uh, you know, they say that it takes a village to raise, uh, you know, raise a child. For us, it's taken a village to raise a family of Bloomiers, which is what we call our Bloom founders together. And uh, the Bloom platform really embodies that. Uh, yet the journey is just midway, it's 10 years, but we feel it's just starting. So really looking forward to the next decade and the key role that the platform is going to make in furthering that. Back to you, Sarita. Thanks. Thanks, Sanjay. Like Sanjay mentioned, 
our mantra has become the best founders come in for the capital but stay for the platform so this is kind of a mantra our very existence we owe to our founders and we thought it would this session would be incomplete without bringing in our founders so we'll have now a 5 7 minute chat between sanam and two of our founders dirain who's the founder of turtle mint and gaurav who's the founder of procol on how the bloom platform has made a difference in their journey sanam over to you i'll stop screen share so you can um gaurav dirain can you just switch on your videos please thanks hi can you hear me Yeah. Yes. Can. Hi, Gaurav. Hi, Dhiren. Thank you so much for uh, uh, removing the time and coming in here. I think it's great to finally have some Bloomiers and the real uh, journey of uh, what Bloomiers have been through using the platform that we have. Um, you know, I'll first start with introductions. Uh, you know, Dhiren, can you tell us a little bit about Turtlement and what you do? Yeah, Turtlement is an insure tech uh, platform. Uh, 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 we build a platform that is used by financial advisors, about hundred thousand plus of them, uh, to distribute insurance uh, uh, to their in-network community members. Uh, we uh, are, are sort of about two hundred and fifty million dollars plus uh, in terms of uh, premium uh, run rate. Uh, Bloom was one of our early uh, investor. In fact, uh, Bloom invested even before we were incorporated, uh, uh, and we raised capital uh, uh, through a few rounds. We have. We have Sequoia, GGV, uh, uh, SIG, and a couple more uh, uh, indexes ventures uh, on our cap table uh, right now. Thank you, Dhiren. Uh, Gaurav, um, could you please go ahead and tell us a little bit about you and what uh, Procol is solving? Sure. Uh, thanks, Ram. Procol is an enterprise gateway marketplace. We help uh, large FMCG manufacturing. Uh, companies in goods and services procurement, uh, providing them with a software which helps them reduce cost, uh, optimize their sourcing and uh, purchases across their direct and indirect spends. Um, we we do about um, now hundred crores of uh, GMV run rate every month uh, through our platform and uh, growing growing fast. Uh, we we are we are now also in other um, investor. Uh, On the cap tables like Sequoia Surge, Bnex, and uh, Zero Da Rain Matter. Fantastic! Um, thank you so much. So you know, with everything that we spoke about today in terms of the platform and the way the Bloom, uh, the way Bloom has created this platform to be able to help uh, founders like you uh, uh, and make your journey a little bit, you know, stronger and more valuable till the time you know you guys reach the top. Um, Dhiren, tell us a little bit about uh, you know Constellation Blue. Um, I know that you, uh, you know, I know there has been a very very long journey you've had with them. Uh, I think uh, right from the incorporation and the first fundraise to up to your recent. Concluded Series D um, and a retainer that they've been, uh, you know, uh, on with you for six years, right? How vital was their support uh, during the growth years of Tournament? Yeah, uh, so we uh, uh, actually uh, uh, we were incorporated by uh, Constellation team, and uh, 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 at that time, probably I had not realized how important uh, uh, the the entire sort of engagement with Constellation team is going to be for uh, uh, for us. Uh, uh, the, uh, it, it, the the way it has evolved over the years is that uh, you know initially uh, when you are in our early stage uh, trying to figure out a, a product create product market fit uh, and you are a small set of people uh, trying to solve for the uh, the, the problem that uh, that we thought we felt passionate about at that time uh, uh, we engaged with constellation uh, 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 more from a, you know, sort of setting up the framework. Uh, for our uh, you know, finance uh, 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 and the entire account setup, uh, uh, which was needed at that time to uh, maybe have uh, uh, certain standard operating procedures, etc., which was uh, designed by uh, the constellation team. Uh, but what the way it helped us was that you know we could really not worry about all of that uh, and focus more on the problem that we were solving. Uh, we are a regulated company, and hence our compliances were complex. Uh, 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 the structuring of the companies were, was complex because of those regulations. Uh, uh, and Constellation uh, worked with us very closely on that. Uh, 
uh, but it was not not only just setting it up uh, once it was looking at it constantly and ensuring that uh, as we scaled uh, the the changing uh, uh, changing regulations the changing dynamics of the company were taken into account uh, when we were uh, 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 sort of putting the new uh, standard operating procedures uh, uh, the compliance framework uh, in place uh, so as we got into the growth stage what happened uh, was that we were in a way uh, if i may use the word uh, sort of well structured uh, 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 to be able to sort of grow without having to uh, you know really worry about uh, uh, the uh, the processes and uh, uh, and all the other uh, growth related challenges uh, uh, which was sort of fully taken care of uh, by the constellation uh, team uh, for me practically till 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 maybe 15 days back uh, we had no head of finance it was mithul and his team uh, working very very closely uh, with us in fact i have i would have engaged more with or equally uh, with mithul as any other of our uh, uh, core team members uh, the uh, the second big sort of benefit that we got other than the operational execution was uh, on the from the fundraise side we went through a few fundraisers and uh, uh, the entire uh, you know we, we were we were data room ready when we were working with the constellation because they would have sort of taken care of some of those or they had a foresight to see what would happen uh, uh, in the uh, in the future fundraisers and they were sort of we were quite ready in terms of uh, although there were challenges even then but we were quite ready in terms of being able to go through the due diligences very very uh, quickly get all the uh, 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 get all the processes done and the uh, and the fundraise would be completed quickly uh last 12 months i have also started uh, you know using the legal uh, uh services of constellation uh, and uh, yeah, in fact now uh, we've switched to uh, constellation uh, as our uh, the, almost like a retainer council where they are looking at all our uh, all our documentation contract management uh, and even all the fundraising related documentation so uh, uh, you know it would have been really hard to uh, uh, manage all the uh like like i think mithul lord some someone mentioned that nine months to 12 months we are in a fundraise mode and if you doing three or five uh in a four or five year cycle uh you are almost 50 to 80% of the time you are you are constantly in a fundraise mode and uh that uh, you continue to do and also at the same time execute the business right it becomes a big challenge uh, uh, uh but, but having a, a sort of I, I mean constellation is we almost feel like they are part of our uh, team now and no longer think of them as a separate uh Uh, i'm so used to seeing uh, constellation team in my office now uh, uh, it is uh, it would have been re- really hard to uh, execute uh, without the support of constellation uh, without the support of constellation crew team thank you so much deren uh, i think I, i i love that i love the fact that you know you think of constellation as a uh, part of the team and you know you you can relate uh, for, for such a long time of uh, tournament you did not go back, you know you did not get involved into having other finance professionals but were using uh, and partnering with constellation blue it says a lot about the uh, you know the amount of uh, support that uh, you know a platform like this is able to provide a company like tournament um, and, and and it's really great to hear um got of you know let's let's talk a little bit about the other part of the platform right um let's talk about um you know when you were working uh, you know with bloom along uh, you know on the side of biz dev right um the business development part of it uh, what stood out the most um you know how do you think bloom as a vc was able to help uh, you know in that uh, you know particular area and what do you think wowed you the most when it came to working with uh, you know uh, the business development team right thanks uh, thanks anand so uh, i think as an early stage startup when we just start out and more so as young founders enterprise uh, sales does not come in entirely to us uh, bloom and jitesh uh, kind of were our first sales guys uh, who got us in the doors so when we raised our first uh, first round with bloom ventures uh, we had about two two active customers end up in enterprise segment uh, and we did not know what a scalable gtm was at that point Uh, we did not know how are we going to reach the fortune 500s or thousands uh, in in a country like india where everything is relationship driven so we had to um, we had to ask for help uh, to jitesh and uh, bloom team to get us connects with the larger uh, set of enterprises 
and um, one one monday morning i wake up and uh, look at my inbox and i have all the connects i need to go out and pitch uh, our solution to um, the the customers that we'd asked for the stakeholders we'd requested and we were um, we were connected with them right away so uh, the speed and the uh, accuracy of ex- execution with the jitesh and bloom team have been phenomenal for us uh, at at some point uh, they were about 60% uh of of leads and customers which had come in through bloom um and since then we we have come a long way now and uh, but still bloom has been uh, pr- probably the highest and the most active investor helping us in business development uh, on enterprise segment thank you so much uh, gaurav i i i think uh, that is you know and, and i do feel that the business development part becomes very relevant for uh, you know uh, for companies like procol who are looking to uh, you know get their uh, their uh, you know the entire client started in terms of all the work that is going to be uh, you know taken use of in terms of procol um, you know i mean i personally know i have you know pinged and irritated you guys both Diren and Gaurav early in the mornings for giving me feedback about a lot of uh, senior folks that you guys have hired through Passion Connect. Um, I'm going to take this time to talk a little bit about, uh, you know, your journey with Passion Connect. I think, uh, you know, to start with you, uh, Diren, um, you know, so in terms of, uh, in terms of having a ecosystem driven hiring effort where you are getting some very unique initiatives like the x founders initiative or aqua hiring or many other uh, very non traditional hiring uh, you know uh, ideas uh, which is you know which is about selling total men to the uh, you know as career opportunities to uh, various professionals in the industry what has you know what what do you think is the relevance of having an uh, you know exclusive ecosystem wide ha- effort in hiring uh, that passion connect does today and you know what do, what do you, what do you feel would have been totalman's journey if uh, passion connect was uh, you know not there to help you if you can share a few uh, instances of the same uh, yes and i'm like you mentioned uh, uh, earlier so one of the biggest challenges that uh, any uh, sort of founder would face is uh, uh, is being able to sort of recruit attract high quality team uh, and uh, getting them to believe in the uh, in the vision of the company when you are sitting in a uh, probably a, a small setup in our case it was a small terrace uh very weird plastic chairs and we didn't even have proper sort of tables in front of us and we were operating out of that uh space and we uh had to sort of get people to believe in what we were trying to do and get them to uh, uh start working with us uh, uh, uh i think well, one one big support or uh, uh, uh something that differentiates a startup is that uh, if they are able to get the right kind of uh uh right kind of profiles getting get them to get attracted and sort of start working with you and uh you uh if you try to work through sort of classic concerts uh you always have this challenge of you know uh, having a very cookie cutter specific sort of profile kind of uh, uh being sort of uh, fed to you and then uh, i often realize that uh, uh, you know it, it's uh, not the really the kind of dna the kind of, uh, the quality that you would want uh which is something that we are able to uh, uh benefit out of the uh, the ecosystem framework that uh, bloom has created uh, uh getting a so, lot of our business verticals are businesses in themselves now and uh, uh some are sort of scaling up almost like independent business units and you need uh, the dna of a founder uh, or a, or an entrepreneur or an ex entrepreneur who can come and uh, lead some of those mini business initiatives and uh, they are not standard profiles you can't get them uh by you know searching on linkedin you can't uh, really uh, attract them just by uh just to consult on regular approach uh, uh, uh so this the ecosystem that has got created i think you've got you had a lot of our uh, senior folks uh, especially in the core team on the tech product side and even some on the some on the business side uh, uh through this uh, through this platform and that has really uh, enabled us to sort of turbocharge uh, some of the uh the new initiatives that we took and we were able to sort of uh, uh, uh you know uh, create a stand alone business verticals that are uh, operating uh, uh, like independent business units uh, uh, so uh, i i think uh, that a, any founder would love uh, 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 this kind of an initiative i mean it's the access to talent that is very very critical and that is something that is getting uh, done because of this kind of initiative. 
thank you Diren. i think i i and i i can vouch for all the recruiters that uh, you know pitch tournament every day and uh, you know uh, try to create as much uh, excitement as we can in terms of what tournament is solving as a real world problem um you know gorav i mean you know you, it, it, it's pretty early into uh, you know uh, as you know you're a very very young founder and i think it's commendable uh, you know starting procol and uh, you know um, um, getting into the entire journey of uh, an early stage startup um, what do you feel about uh, you know about having a team that will uh, you know that at the moment is uh, you know looking at um, helping you hire the core team at the moment uh, you know in procol if you can you know quickly tell us a little bit about uh, what do you feel about you know the hiring efforts that are helping procol at the moment in terms of building the core team right hiring um, hiring is in india we feel as a skills gap rather than a discovery problem uh, and and so we constantly figure out the ways to uh, upskill hire the best people uh, who have proven themselves in various different domains and then get them to adopt and uh, train them upskill them uh, on various different fronts at procol uh, we sort of uh, thought this from the beginning that uh, people are uh, core of everything we do and so if we need to uh, hire and retain the best talent we have to um, first do things that uh, that is going to bring them on board which is have a great mission to at least work with and then uh, and then put them and give them solid work which uh, which fulfills them uh and that sort of bounds the culture at procol to get more people but we honestly have not done enough um on on running these initiatives to get the best people now because early on we were still running uh and the founders were doing a lot of things and now we are growing uh and we are now recruiting very heavily which is where i believe passion connect is uh, connecting us with the market back again uh fantastic uh, thank you so much and uh, you know i am uh, you know very excited as well to be working for uh, very early stage products like procol so thank you um fantastic thank you so much dhiren and gorav for uh, giving spending this time and giving us insight into how founders like you have been able to use uh, the platform um um i will now open up the uh, uh, question and answers uh, that we have um uh from the audience if we have some particular question and answers that you would want to ask yes yeah, so i'm going to take this i think it's best uh, we were thinking of getting kartik to answer uh, answer these so we have a couple of questions um and it'll be great i think if if uh, kartik and anishish can come in uh, first one's from ryan i'm not sure if he's still on um but the question kartik to you uh, if you were starting to, uh, today and building a platform for pre seed and seed investments what would the platform look like uh, put another way uh, what platform based white spaces do you see in early stage investing ecosystem in india so i think the only difference uh, we're very proud of what we built uh, not too many early stage firms that have managed to achieve what we have and i think there's a logical sort of challenge in that right a structural challenge um small funds don't make too much fees right and so to bring in the kind of talent to be able to service a very wide diverse portfolio is fairly complex so there's a good reason we built it very iteratively because you had to come to a natural point where a you could bring in motivated talent they could get excited by the scale of what was getting built it's just not about helping you know otherwise you would look like an accelerator cohort which is also interesting but then you got to be designed for that kind of economics right you know where you're putting very little money but you're adding a lot of value on top of that so we we were not necessarily designed to do that with the little capital fees we had but if i were building one which is what most funds have done post 2015 16 they've been very specialized vertically which means that you can go build a deep tech fund an agri fund a fintech fund they're not building generalist tech funds at early stage so you would go and build domain experts build a set of advisors who can help these companies operational partners build a uh, strategic lps who can actually help these companies so you replicate a, a sense of you know product management market go to market strategies capital in a domain specific fashion which i don't think a fund like ours could necessarily afford i wouldn't uh, necessarily do anything too differently i think we built a phenomenal set of partners as you've seen in the last hour just uh, i would love to do it faster if somebody believed in the vision and gave us the capital up front 
Got it. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Karthik. Um, we have another question. Uh, and guys, if you have more, please send it to us. I think this one, Ashish, I'm going to pull you in. Uh, I don't have a name, so it's from an anonymous attendee. Um, it's an interesting question, actually. Uh, VCs are backing exceptional founders to build exceptional companies, uh, multi, multi-billion multi million dollar businesses. If the founder needs help at the beginning, how can he or she build a big business? Uh, I think it's essentially challenging the platform model, but they still uh, praise us. So I'll, I'll take that with, with on both sides. Over to you. Sure. Uh, thanks, Jitesh. So I think I would like to uh, mention... Uh, two points here. The whole uh, vision about the platform effort is to enable the best of founders make great companies. And I think the VC model is all about collaboration fundamentally. The best of founders are going to call for help as soon as they need it. And if a VC has come into the company and holding 15-20% plus stake, uh, they are as good as uh, any other shareholder uh, co-founder equivalent. So it's the uh, bang for the buck that they are giving that help for. And I think it should be provided in all forms possible. So the whole endeavor is to behave like partners in the journey to the extent uh, it is non-intrusive. We encourage more of it. And it is nothing, uh, in, our, in our minds, it is about uh, enhancing the value that the founder is building and making it easier than uh, creating certain pity like uh, Karthik said in his opening remarks. And at the end of it, I think it is fundamentally uh, critical for founders to seek help and for investors to offer all that they can do to take the company to the next level. So while I agree with the fact that you want the founders to be the best of uh, leaders, best of uh, tech, uh, best of strategy, etc. But at the end of the day, the best of founders will need the help and they'll call out when need. If I can quickly add to that, basically... Uh... There is there is this been being this debate in the middle of the decade, and I think there are there's a fallacy in that argument. First time founders have never built businesses before; they just adopt a title called CEO, and they don't even know what that means. Basically, it means that they have to take care of everything in the company, and the capital that you give to, from C to A is not enough to go and hire the best of talent out there. We are trying to be the partners who replicate that best of talent inside of the company. You can't get an HR, CHRO, a CFO of the quality that even we provide through the platform. Or for that matter, a banker who will come and do a quality piece of work in fundraising. I think that's what we're essentially trying to provide out here. And we're on demand, right? So it's not like we're imposing. And so the best founders know what help to seek when, take the, uh, the intervention and just keep building faster. We are increasing speed. And that's, I think, key to build great businesses much, much more quickly. Great. Uh, thanks. Thanks, Karthik. I'll just, I have one last question of my own, uh, which for the, I wanted to ask for the benefit of the audience. Uh, we're almost out of time. So thank you for your patience. Uh, I'm just curious, I think for a lot of people who uh, in the audience who either are working at funds or are fund managers who face this when they go to their LPs, are there any two, three things that you have seen have helped you in your LP conversations? Because, because, you know, as he said, a challenge is map, you know, trying to uh, put, put impact to this. So are there any couple of tips that you can provide, which the audience can take back uh, anything that you think has helped more or less? Uh, I think that will be a great way to end this um, session. So I think, I think there are two, since uh, Ashish Sanjay and me do a lot of this, uh, we do get asked, is there a way to measure the impact of this on returns? Because the LP is going to say, hey, if you can't deliver the necessary returns, what's the value of the platform? I mean, it's nice to have, but is it a must have? And I think we are trying to win that argument conclusively. And I think we're a couple of years away from completing those cycles and showing that we can outperform a vintage. Eventually, you're going to be benchmarked against your peers, same vintage, a couple of cycles, and people are going to say, hey, did this outperform? Is there a systematic element of 1x outperformance or half x outperformance that they continuously see? So... I think that the jury is out when if you do deliver 5x funds, then you can brag that some of that came from the value of what you provided. Uh, the, the, other, the other part of that, I would say, is um, it, it is so far, I think a lot of the capital that's come our way has been on the back of the promise of returns, right? But that's what the first two three funds are about. And at that point, people come and evaluate why are people taking money from these guys? Why are they supposedly good? And a lot of the diligence is from the ecosystem and the founders. And so 
if the founders don't believe what you're adding of value, they would have called out your bluff with their LPs, right? And it's not about the 500K or imagine for the first four years, we gave 250K max. For the next three, we gave 500, 750K. Now we give a little over a million dollars. And most of these companies, like the ones you saw on, on stage today, he's raised, you know, the rain has raised like $50 million or $60 million. He doesn't need to acknowledge a million dollars unless we were adding value. And I think it therefore feeds back into LP diligence uh, and what founders say about us. And so I would want, I want, I would want to believe that it's playing that, that part, that critical part. And that's one thing our LPs tell us unabashedly, that we come out with flying colors when we speak to our founders. And so I think that's the proof. So Jitesh, just uh, 30 seconds on this, you know, we'll hold the mirror back to you because you can answer the same question and get it done. But um, if you if you think about everything that we do is about compounding, right? And I think one of the areas that the platform comes in and that LPs care about a lot is speed and scale. And you can achieve the same result, you can achieve the same outcome, but if you can achieve it faster, I think that's again where the platform comes in, right? Because can you get, can you double your revenues faster? Can you... Uh, uh, you know, can you raise funding faster? Can you get to market? And can you hire faster? And I think in that sense, platform the platform becomes an accelerator and a compounder in that sense. So that's really where, you know, it, it can directly tie back to our things. No, absolutely. I mean, I, uh, is why we're all here. So so I think that that does speak for itself, but it was one of the things I, I've always meaning to ask and I thought it was great to do it here. Um, anyway, so I think with this, we'll really wrap up. Um, Thanks a lot, everyone, for attending and, and patiently listening in. Uh, we're available at our first names at bloom.vc if you want to reach out to us. I'm guessing most of you already know, but otherwise, please reach out to us and happy to answer any questions. Um, thanks, thanks everyone, the team who came in as well. And uh, please uh, do catch us through the week for other sessions and uh, look forward to seeing you guys. Thank you.